Hello everybody, welcome to Lee Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Lee Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Leet Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another edition of the show. So I'm back, we're doing some reviews, finally. Um, not that I don't love doing interviews, actually that's the stuff I love to do kind of the most now. Anyway, um, so uh, back doing some reviews here. I have round one of uh, doing some reviews. So I'm gonna do uh, one, two, three, four reviews. I thought I was doing five. I was doing five sets of reviews here, so hold on. One, two, oh, I gotta pull that one out. Okay, so I got five sets of reviews I'm gonna do, and then I have another five sets of reviews to do in a couple days. Um, gonna do that, and uh, got lots of samples, free samples that I've gotten over the past like two, three, four months, and uh, it's time to catch up on it. Um, so this, uh, as you've seen already, I've switched to a twice a week um, a twice a week uh, uh, release, uh, twice a week, two shows per week, that's what I meant to say, two shows per week um, uh, for the show, and uh, I expect that to continue for quite a while, including interviews. The only time I'll probably stick with one show for a particular week will be like for specials, so like Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, um, just because of those, I really want them to have a full week. But, um, I'm gonna to try to, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna start doing two a week. You've already seen it, the last three interviews uh, were done in the twice a week uh, schedule. So I've got five reviews I'm gonna to try to do tonight. I am gonna, I already got the wines. And then I'll do another five uh, sets of five reviews here in, in another couple days. So that gives me 10 episodes to record in about less than a week. And that will be five weeks of, of uh, shows. Um, so housekeeping a little bit, uh, since I really haven't been able to do much since it's all been interviews. Uh, so you saw saw the anniversary show. I had a couple of reviews after that. Um, uh, had a great time out in Lubbock. Um, just to clarify, I don't think I, I, I know I didn't mention it in the interview, but Neil uh, Neil let me stay at his B and B for free, uh, which was. <laughs> I was floored that I was able to do that. Um, it was really nice. Um, I initially was going to stay in Lubbock, um, you know, get a hotel room. I actually had a reservation, um, but then Neil was like, "No, I told you when I saw you in January that you'll be our guest." So I was like, "Cool." So I called the called the hotel, and said, "Hey, got to cancel." So, um, so that was that was I wouldn't say unexpected because he said he would, but. You know, I was still unexpected. I still was, you know, just so humbled that uh, I was allowed to stay at his B&B uh, &B for free. Um, I've got stuff working uh, over the next few more weeks. I was hoping to, I was hoping to get confirmation of an interview um, uh, that will be after these reviews, but I haven't got any confirmation on it. But I am going to a, a wine tasting in Houston, uh, middle of June, uh, middle of July. Uh, for for a uh, burgundy class and I was hoping to interview the person that's going to be conducting the class But I don't think I'm going to be able to do that or they haven't replied um, And then uh, some of the other things I thought might happen haven't happened I was hoping to get a uh, trip up to New York for a uh, New York taste New York thing they they uh, fly media and uh, other wine professionals up there for free um, I contacted them. I haven't heard back yet. I figure if I was going, I would know by now because this is July. Uh, well, I guess it's technically July 7th because it's like freaking 119 in the morning. Um, so I haven't heard back from that. So I was hoping to have that. Uh, I am planning a trip uh, in the fall. Um, the exact destination isn't uh, nailed down quite yet, but I am planning a trip uh, to the West Coast in in the fall uh though a friend of mine like really tempted me about going to spain and bordeaux and uh unless he's gonna pay for that trip i ain't gonna go <laughs> so uh so i gotta call rick hey oh rick so my buddy rick uh he was uh 
uh, interview from several years ago uh, with his uh, friend Brian Page uh, over at um, Albericos. Um, so Rick uh, saw Rick uh, a couple weeks ago and he was telling, hey, I'm going to blah, blah, blah. You should come with me. I'm like, cool, I'd love to. And he goes, only cost me this much money. I'm like, cool. And then I started thinking about that. I can't know. So I got to call Rick and tell him like, hey, man, unless you're paying for the whole thing uh, or I can do it for like this much money, which is the same amount of money I would spend on this trip in the fall, then I, I can't go. Um, let's see what else. Um, yeah. So what I'm doing also right now, I'm using the normal camera for the review, but I've also got the iPhone going. Um, and that's all just a test. I've got... Um, I've got uh, the, the iPad going because I'm having issues. I was having issues with Filmic Pro. So um, a few things happening with that. Uh, I, I think some of it is Wi-Fi interruptions. So I made sure that neither device is actually on the local Wi-Fi network here. Um, I've also got it plugged into power, uh, which that's actually, that's actually fine. Um, I have a battery case I can use. But um, I, which I have used in the past, and that I'm not worried about power necessarily. But I've got plugged into power. Um, I've got everything set up, so I shouldn't have any issues with Filmic Pro because uh, I really want to make that my camera. Now I have used uh, during these last three interviews, I used my DJ, DJI Osmo Pocket because it's rock solid, and I can use the phone. I could probably use the iPad too, but I can use the phone as a monitor, and that's really why I have that set up so I can do that. Now with the video camera, I, I've got an LCD screen so I can see everything. Um, so it's really just kind of like nailing down why Filmic Pro doesn't work sometimes. Um, and I think I've got it all figured out. So, I mean, other people are making freaking feature films with this thing. How, why I can't, you know, have a 30 minute, one hour episode with Filmic Pro, I don't know. So um, basically the idea is I'm trying to avoid bringing the, the video camera that I'm using, mainly because... Um, the battery I have for it, I have a, I have a large capacity battery for it, but it's, it's a third, it's a third party. It's a, you know, third party battery. So the camera doesn't recognize the battery. So I have no idea how much battery life I have with it. And so at home, I don't need the battery. I have plugged into power. So just one less item to bring. Every, basically the idea of mobile setup is everything needs to work off of battery, uh, and have plenty of battery life. Even the, the light I use, which none of these lights are the ones I use. Um, the battery I have on it can last three hours and I have two of those batteries. So I'm good to go like all day. I never do more than two interviews and they never last more than a two hours. So I have plenty of battery life for those things. And then the phone, as long as I have like my extra battery pack, either the battery pack or I have the extra USB battery for it, I'll never have any problems with, with phone, uh, with the phone running out of battery, except like when I don't have it plugged into a battery pack, I'm at Yano Estacado. So, you know, funny story on that one. So, um, anyway, so enough of that, man, we, I should have already had the review done by now. So let's get into this. Um, before this warms up anymore. So uh, this is a free sample. So you may recognize uh, the producer here. This is Pasqua. So um, my good friends at Creative Palette, uh, who were the ones that actually set me up at Pasqua. So again, thank you so much uh, for that. Um, they were like, hey, we have, you know, blah, 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 wines. I'm like, well, I already did the rosé. <laughs> I already did the 11 minutes rosé. I did an interview with them. But they had this Prosecco. So uh, this is the, um, let me get back to the name on that. Bum, bum, bum. So this is the Passione e Sentimento uh, Prosecco. And uh, it's 100% Glera, which is the official name of the grape for uh, Prosecco. Um, it's not ice cold. That's why you heard the little pssh. And um, it, it retails uh, for, I think it's $16 is the suggested retail for it. Um, this is the Romeo and Juliet Prosecco. So you may remember from the um, may remember from my interview that uh, with uh, Alessandro that uh, I think we mentioned it. You know this this little picture here. Um, this is the uh, that's the graffiti on the wall where the Romeo and Juliet graffiti is, um, and it's a photograph from me. Look that up real quick. That gentleman's name is Gio or Joe, I guess uh, Matorana. Uh, so it's an original photograph of Juliet's courtyard. Uh, is it has become the only look for the wines, an un unmistakable element, blah blah blah. Um, 
Let's see, so this is used, uh, this Prosecco is uh, used, uh, made using the Charmat method, which is the tank method. Um, and uh, it is the Glata varietal is native to the Treviso area. Uh, in this land, there are the best soils and weather conditions. Um, let's see, uh, blah, blah, blah. Sorry, I got confused for a second there. Uh, ensuring a wine with unique characteristics and vivacious and fresh wine that is vers versatile and quaffable, blah, blah, blah. So this is actually, um, uh, so it's Prosecco Treviso Spumante Brut uh, DOC. All right, so let's get into the wine. Whew. <coughs> I shouldn't have maybe like done it like that because I, I, got, I got a nose full of bubbles. So just a, a quick little like, Spin. You don't need to do like swirl it a lot with with the with sparkling wines in general. It's really clean smelling. Um, well, there's a plane outside. It's a little late for a plane. There were fireworks earlier when I was setting up. Actually, it's probably a sounds like a helicopter. Maybe someone's maybe someone's running from the popo. I don't know. Anyway. Um, It's just really clean smelling. Like, like I actually feel like I'm looking at the wall and I'm smelling like concrete. Um, it's a touch of like peach on the fruit, like a white peach, but it's really just like a, it's a clean smelling wine, not a whole lot on the nose as far as fruit or some minerality to it. Yeah, I would call it like a white peach, almost like a peach tea. So let's, uh, let's check it out. First one's just kind of rinse the mouth out. I don't drink a lot of Prosecco. And so I'll be honest, I usually will drink other things than Prosecco. Um, and a lot of it has to do with the fact that this is not the champagne method and champagne method just produces a different mouthfeel. But, and I'm not saying this is like drinking champagne or traditional method, um, but it's really got a really great mouthfeel. It's got a good mousse as it's called. Um, it, I, I get a little bit of that bakery aspect, um, which would be Lee's contact, which, um, can happen in this in the method that is made, but usually you're getting that you're getting the really abundant uh, lease contact from what's in the bottle. So if you uh, saw the Gruet interview, you saw that we had uh, in the bottle. I don't want to use that one, but you know, in the neck of the bottle, we had the 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 dead lees collecting in there, and having that that collection, having that contact, really gives you that brioche bakery pastry type thing. This has a hint of it. It's not really overwhelming. It's just a hint of it. Um, the white peach is there. It's also kind of um, kind of lemony. Orange. Um, not quite orange candy, but like an orange, orange characteristic to it. Peach, orange. You know, just some really nice, really nice citrusy and um, uh, tree fruit type of, of aromas. Really pleasant. Really coats the mouth well. Acidity is really nice. Really nice and highest acidity as it should be. Um, really pleasant wine. You know, it, it's to me, it's a step up of the usual suspects. Um, it's, I feel it has a has better flavor, better mouthfeel, um, just better balance to it. Um, it's not sweet. Um, so like some of these things, Prosecco's can kind of come off as sweet because it may be really fruity. Um, this is definitely dry. I don't feel it's really sweet at all. Um, so yeah, let's see, uh, 11% alcohol. Here's the thing it's 10.8 grams per liter on the sugar. That's, that's like almost a demi sec. Okay. But the acidity, um, so they put total acidity is 5.3 grams per liter and the pH is 3.27. So that pH level, that pH number is pretty low. It's not quite champagne 
um, and Riesling, you know, uh, acidity, but the acidity is bouncing what's left on the residual sugar. 11% on the alcohol, so not high alcohol, not low alcohol, just kind of a medium alcohol, but I don't really feel it's like sweet. So the acidity is really balancing that, uh, that sugar. Yeah, it tastes really good. Um, I'm really pleased with it. I kind of feel it's like, a, like I said, it's like, it's like a next level up from your usual, your usual like entry level or cheap or inexpensive, so to speak, uh, Prosecco's. So yeah, um, it's really good. I like it, I like it a lot. All right, so um, let's, let's pop this sucker on here. Um, this, this style of champagne stopper is the best because it really, it clamps on here. As long as you get it on there, it really clamps on there and this thing is gonna be rock solid. And I think this style really keeps the wine fresh for at least a week, but I'm probably gonna crush it here in a couple days. All right, so that's gonna do it for this episode. As always, click the links above to friend me up. You, uh, click the links below to uh, for information about that. You hit the donate button over there, and uh, we'll see everyone again next time.